Welcome to the Philly Sports Dish, another Philadelphia Eagles 76ers, all types of Philadelphia craziness edition. Sirianni got the flower stone at him this week. <laughs> I'm the one and only big game name. This is my main man, too, and let's get into it. Yes. Philadelphia Eagles, San Diego Chargers. Just, let's just start off with your overall impressions of what we saw. Close game. Um, what do you think? The defensive coordinator is killing me. Um, I, I just – that and 96. 96 is killing me. The defensive coordinator is killing me. I, I ask you this. What does Derek Barnett do that he can't get benched? Like, what does he bring to the table that he's consistently out there making mistakes in the guts of the game? And uh, Brandon Graham got hurt. He was yeah. the first-round pick. I, I just – like, at this point, like – you can bench him to send a message. It's not like you win it. And and this comes back to this coaching set. If you look at it, I was checking out the statistics. I know. The quarterback percentage. This defense is going to break NFL records in futility. I think, what, it was only one game. It might have been, off the top of my head, I'm thinking, it might have been like Matt Bryan was like 57%, something like that. But we got guys like 84%. Uh, Herbert, uh, this week, I forget, his percentage was really high. I think he completed his last 23 passes. I yeah, think. last 23 passes. <laughs> and and I'm telling you, when you, you know, when you're actually there, and I got, like, the coach's view, and you just see them just play off. Listen, I do you one better. They just play. They just, there's no I'm, aggressiveness. I'm at my uncle's. His TV has to be at least 70 inches, his television. I didn't see the cornerbacks on the screen when Herbert was hiking the ball. <laughs> oh, no, they're all the way back there. They're with us like, in the concession stands. I'm, and I'm like, where's the cornerbacks? It was, it was just like pitch and catch the Keenan Allen all day. And then when they blitz, he's finally got the whole idea of blitzing. They, they have the same vanilla blitzes that they run, but they play the corners off. You have to, pr like. I'm sorry, like, wasn't, wasn't Darius like, Slay a press corner? Oh, my gosh. This is why I hate NFL coaches so much. <laughs> This is why I hate NFL coaches. They never play to the strengths of the players. It's all about their ego and their system, their quote-unquote system. And what's his system? I don't have a system. He doesn't have a system. He's somebody's guy, so he's got the job. Did they punt? Has anyone punted this season? <laughs> Outside of the Detroit game, has anyone punted this season? And here's the thing for me, and this is what I wanted to ask you. Mm -hmm. At the end of that game, there are two schools of Eagles fans now. There were the school of Eagles fans who were complaining about the defense. Then there was a school of Eagles fans who were complaining about Jalen Hurts missing those two passes. Mm -hmm. The one to um the one um in the back of the end zone and the one that got it. And yeah, I know one said Devontae Smith that he missed, but Devontae now, his, said he and, it up. Now I'm gonna say this because everyone knows that I'm lean I'm gonna lean towards criticizing the defense. Mm -hmm. He, in my personal opinion, looking at it. Once again, he made the mistake young quarterbacks make when he didn't step into his throws. Mm -hmm. Now, the argument is, well, he's never done that, and he never will do it. Not when your coaching is – I'm trying to choose a word that's, <laughs> that's clean. But it's like, yeah, well, we're seeing this on the defensive side of the ball as well. We're even sweat where his, um, he's not lining up properly. You know, Barnett, it's it's a systemic thing with this with this coaching staff. Like I'm a, I guess I'm in that school of criticizing the defense, but I will say this. The quarterback has missed some throws. He's missed some throws. He, he has missed some throws. Now listen, I always gotta remind myself what has it been about thirteen starts now? What, yeah. you know, so I try to keep it in perspective and I don't wanna overreact. But in fairness, he he he's missed a couple of throws this this week and prior to the Detroit game, where it's game changing. Yeah, and and listen, you gotta make that throw. Yeah, you, you gotta and, make that throw. And I'm in the camp of it's fair to criticize him and call him out for that because he's got to make that throw. But you know, I'm hearing, oh well, you know, this guy's he he's done. He's he should be in the CFL. Listen, and stuff I'm, like that. I'm giving him the bit like I said, I'm gonna to continue to give him the benefit of that. I'm starting to to shape and form an opinion, 
But also, I'm going to wait till the season ends because I think that's only fair. After the season ends, he should have, what, about 20 starts under his belt mm-hmm. if he's able to play the whole season. So at that time, I think we can evaluate. I don't want to rush because the schedule gets a little bit lighter. I, I like to see him if he, if he can do what he did against Detroit, take advantage of a bad team show, okay, even though I know the running game kind of dominated that Detroit game. But I want to see him. But I want to see how he adjusts going forward. But if you look at his numbers when they run the ball, they're significantly better. They're like – impressive compared to when they just air it out so there's something there but i think and i don't know if this coaching staff is strong enough to do it you gotta have you gotta have a real conversation with him and be like kid you're not gonna make it in the league unless you fix your mechanics let me ask you this i know we i know we're gonna say that we're gonna wait to the end of the season but right now does he pass the eye test does he pass the eye test as a star quarterback in the NFL? No. Is, is he an NFL quarterback? Yes. Okay. Um, is he the guy? I don't know. He's got to fix his mechanics. Like, if, And if he can't fix it, you got to move on. Um, I will say that. But, you know, in my personal opinion, the mind is there. He's got that intangible. He's got that knack. He does have that intangible. And he's extremely likable. The players like and respect him. Like, the, he's the type of quarterback where the fan base would get behind him. But the mechanics have to get fixed. See, what you said makes me nervous. And I'm going to tell you why. Because my personal philosophy is my best player can't be an overachiever. Yeah. And that's how it sounds like you described Jalen Hurts. And the best player, he just got to be a flat-out baller. Yeah. And that's the reason why when you ask me if he's an NFL quarterback, I think he's definitely shown that he's an NFL quarterback. But, you know, is he that guy? He's got a lot to show. I should, I, I, listen, I'm going to piggyback off that. Is he a starting NFL quarterback? I, I think he definitely belongs in the league. I, I can see him. He's definitely backup worthy. But is he a starting quarterback, meaning being able to lead a team to the playoffs? Right now with what we have, I'm going to be honest with you, he's Jeff Garcia. Jeff Garcia level. Like – I think, um, you know, I think you're being a little disrespectful to Jeff Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> a little, a little Jeff Garcia <laughs> is a good player. Like Hertz is, he's a good player right now, but he's not going to be Super Bowl worthy. No, he's not going to take you there unless it's like the, that old Baltimore Ravens team where they just, you know, you, you know, unless he fixes the mechanics. Like you can't, you cannot throw off your back foot when there's no pass rush on you, like he did when he missed that throw. Like, he's got to fit whatever's going on in his brain. He's got to correct that. And my worry is I don't think this he has a coaching staff around him. That's I think everyone's learning on the job. And True. that's a terrible thing to have for a young quarterback, and that falls back on the owner. And I don't think Jalen Hurts – I don't think the Eagles are fair, being fair to Jalen Hurts, by having everyone, quote, unquote, learning on the job because this is Frank Reich's guy who's here. Okay, listen, I, I, I definitely agree with that sentiment. I'll just say this. I'm going to give him to the end of the season and, and see where we're at. Yeah. And, you know, and I would be with the Hurts naysayers if we had a coaching staff who knew what the heck they were doing. And I think it's – and then we'll move on. I think it's actually Code Red with the defensive coordinator. He just doesn't get it. But here's the problem with that. If they fire him, then they're admitting that they made a mistake. And this, this organization isn't quick to say we messed up. They, like – you see Barnett still on the field. It's like they want to show that they made the right decision. And that's what worries me the most. Yeah. And that's what worries – that's the reason I'm kind of concerned too. If you don't think Hurts is the guy, he might be out there next year as well. And it's it's worrisome. And it's a systemic problem with this franchise. That's why Carson Wentz wanted to leave. It wasn't because – Carson didn't want to leave because of us. Carson wanted to leave because of the people upstairs above him. And that's something to think about, Eagles fans. You need to be worried about Lori and that whole structure, okay? It's falling apart. All right. And I hate to be – all right, well, let's just go to some good news. The Philadelphia 76ers. <laughs> so as we speak now, half of the team is, like, in isolation. Don't, don't um, they cancel games at some point if you don't got enough players? And is that rule not in existence anymore? <laughs> all right. All right. No. <laughs> no, it isn't. Hey, they're just going to keep going. You shouldn't get it. So <laughs> that's what they're doing. It's your fault. I don't know what you was doing. So, you know, uh, get well, Joel. 
Uh, I heard he actually is feeling symptoms from it. Uh, Tobias as well. Hope you get better. But, all right, there's two things I want to talk about in regards to Ben Simmons. First of all, here's my quote-unquote hot take. Long term, I think the Sixers are better. Okay. Well, Ben Simmons, um, from what I saw, and this is why. This is why. Mm -hmm. Better offensive team. The ball, the ball moves. The ball moves, and you don't have someone in there who's afraid to shoot. It's more like, I hate the way the current NBA is played. But the Sixers play more like the current NBA now because it's more of that European ball. That is what everyone's doing. And, you know, the, it's, the spacing is better. The rebounding, I will admit, and that's a serious concern. The rebounding, when Embiid is in there, is not as well as it is when you have Simmons in there. You are losing defensively. But you gain that back offensively, and you still some of the sets that Rivers is running, where he'll put Tyball on their best player. I think down the road, by the end of the year, developing chemistry and the improvement of Maxi, which is huge, that team is actually better. Now they still ain't winning nothing. <laughs> yes, I say, like but, to, to me, that that that's just it. I I listen. I'm impressed with what I'm watching. I, I like it, but. This team right now is still a second round exit. Yeah, like no, like so. Until I see what they get for Ben, then I might change my expectations. It's some good pieces here. What I'm taking out of this is, hopefully, he got pieces, but man, he can add on and get something better for Ben. Yeah. He's showing like you know, Max he can play. Yang has been a revelation here. Um, everybody has been contributing, so it isn't like you know. I think a, a team would take a shake Milton in a backup role. So I, I think. That's the thing that Daryl Morey probably is the most happy about was like, it, it's an NBA, he has pieces. And life goes on without Ben. Mm. And you can see that. So here's a question I want to ask you. Mm. What do you settle for if you're Morey? What do you settle for? Where do you say, okay, now I'll pull the trigger. Finally, all right, this is what, this is what, because you know, they're going to have, there has to be like a line where you're like, okay, finally. This is what you really, really want. Mm -hmm. This is what you'll settle for. And the Sixers are going to end up getting what they're going to settle for. They're not going to get what they really, really want. And hey, listen, I'm, I'm going to give you a tease right now. At the end of the show, I'm going to give Dow Morey the perfect trade for Ben Simmons. Oh, The okay. perfect trade. Okay. But what, the tease I'm going to give you is they need uh, a point guard. What I mean by that is a ball handler and somebody who can make good decisions. They need mm -hmm. a point guard and they need a wing. I will settle for... Um, maybe just below All Star level at mm -hmm. those two positions, but that's what they need. If, if they can get a quarterback that can knock down a shot, imagine Seth Curry with a handle that can run the show in the last two minutes, like something like that. Like they don't need I would almost say like a, a a prototypical point guard, but they need somebody that can handle the ball and make good decisions because their problem has always been closing games yeah and that and that is a reflection of the lack of point guard yeah and hopefully that trade is for jimmy butler all right <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's really quick anything you had to say really fast about simmons and the whole circus and the doctors now and nah, listen it, it, this is going to be the song and dance it's like he's going to try to find a way to um get his money yeah, and to, not play to navigate this situation so I expect that. Like I said, I just hope that the Sixers continue to be the adult in the room. Yeah, be the adult in the room. And good luck to the team that finally gets him. Good luck with that. You're getting Australia's finest. So, <laughs> <laughs> Crocodile Dundee, <laughs> Crocodile Hunter, <laughs> Ben Simmons, Croikies, <laughs> All right. and Yahoo Serious. That's the obscure reference for today. All right. How about this? Those stinking Phillies. Mm -hmm. The baseball awards, they announced that uh, Bryce Harper, finalist. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Bryce. Listen, I'm Does a, he have a shot at this? Yeah, he's, he's a lock. Bry you Bryce think Harper, he is a lock for the MVP? He is a lock for the MVP. Can we get the Cy Young, too? Or just, no, no. No, no. All right, I was getting I, I won't go that far. Um, but Bryce Bryce is a lock. If Bryce doesn't win MVP, I, I, I would be extremely surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the pitcher... Um, I'm not, I would be extremely surprised if he won it. <laughs> yeah, the same. I was trying, just saying, like, <laughs> and that's such, that would be such an ironic thing because, you know, I remember way back in the day when Steve Bedrosian won the Cy Young, mm -hmm. won a stinking Phillies team. Like, you know, like you'll have these years where it's just like the Phillies are so dead in the water, but 
You're not like the MVP. I, I, I don't. I don't want her on your team. I don't think it's a reflection of how good the Phillies pitcher was. I think it was a reflection of how down the pitching was in the National League yeah. this year. <laughs> yeah. So. And, Shout out to Bryce. Bryce and the Fanatic were the only two like highlights like this year. Like the the Bray, we talked about the fool's gold. The Braves, was, Bray, like, I'm, I'm gonna quote Mason and the Lion Dixon. You know they got serious. The Braves got serious. <laughs> the Phillies got hurt. You know, like like the Phillies aren't a real contender. Yeah, the Braves went off. Is they they did their thing at the trade deadline. And they did it the right way. Yeah, they did their thing. They did it the right way. You win the way the Phillies did back in the day. You win. From within, yeah. and the Phillies don't get that. And they did it without arguably their best player. Yeah, <laughs> which is scary. <laughs> and they're young; they're younger than the Phillies. So, this has been like a real sunny podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Philadelphia sports. This is like a great time to be a fan, isn't it? Is just... all right. So, closing thoughts. Let's get to that trade, and don't wrap things up. What's the trade? I got the trade. All right, Daryl. I hope you're listening. I just want credit for the trade. This is what happens. All right. The Sixers are giving up Ben Simmons. All right. I like the trade already. <laughs> Tyrese Maxey, uh, Danny Green, and a number one. No, what are we getting back? The New Orleans Pelicans will be receiving Ben Simmons. The Toronto Raptors will be receiving Tyrese Maxey, Danny Green, a one from New Orleans, and a one from the Sixers. And the Sixers end up with Brandon Ingram and Fred Van Fleet. All right. Wait. Uh, that's a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Which I have a notebook. All right. And tell me what do you think that would do for the team? Uh, it balances the team out perfectly. You get the point guard that you can run pick and roll with, big shot maker, championship pedigree. And then you get Brandon Ingram to be another wing player who can make shots. And as you said, you're not playing four and five anymore. And Brandon Ingram, he he's a notch below the all-star caliber player. That it balances the team out. That that team competes for the East. That team competes for the competes East. Competes for the East. With Fred Van Fleet and Brandon Ingram, you compete for the East. I know people don't want to give up Maxi, but you you gotta give the game. You gotta give at this point. And plus it's so hard. It's gonna be hard to move Ben by himself. And and honestly. Maxie probably ends up turning out to be Fred Van Vliet. <laughs> like, like that's that, yeah. that's the path that he's on. Yeah, yeah so, so you, you break even yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. And you got – Joel's got X amount of years. Yeah, so and, I, and, gotta, I, and I think you definitely can sell it because Toronto, they're, they aren't going anywhere. Their first-round pick is playing well. So now you get to have him with Maxie and you get the picks and you can go on. And I think Zion and Ben Simmons can be special if Ben gets his mind right. If Ben gets his mind right <laughs> and Zion gets his weight down, <laughs> you got uh, my six hundred pound life and uh, hoarders or whatever. <laughs> you got the, you got the whole TLC crew <laughs> in New Orleans. <laughs> yeah. so. But I try to be. Fine. I think everybody walks away happy. I don't think nobody walks away like yeah. you know we we got the short end of the stick. I think New Orleans needs to shake it up. They're they're not going anywhere. And Toronto, you get a young talent basically. Fred Van Fleet a couple years younger, which I think they would love. Yeah, and I think for the people, we all love Maxie. Like he's he's yes. such a Philadelphia player. They were talking yes. about they got to send the kid away. He's like their first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, but here's the problem: the Sixers aren't going to win a championship the way they're currently structured. True. We have to win a championship, which means you got to give away somebody you really, really want, yeah. and it ain't Ben Simmons. Yeah. Okay, and like you were saying, Toronto, we're actually. In the same situation Toronto was in. Yeah, when they went to get Kawhi. When they went to get Kawhi. Where it's like yeah, so the window's closing. Good team. You got to find a way to make yourself great. Yeah, because, I mean, the clock's ticking on Embiid. Clock's ticking on Embiid. So you, you yeah. Yourself. I mean, he can't get away when he, he ain't hurt. He's getting there. <laughs> like, and he's vaccinated. I mean, come on, dude. Like, like I mean, like. This guy, step on attack or something. <laughs> like this guy, like, Mr. Glass. All right. So get well, Joel. Get, get well, Jojo. All right. No joke, Jojo. All right, folks. That's going to be it. So once again, thank you for your time. Look, you can find us everywhere that you find your favorite podcast. Like I said, thank you for all the support. We're trying to do things a little bit different. The best 20 minutes in Philadelphia sports you'll get right to the point where the okay? So, 
from my main man, Dill. I'm the one and only big game dame. Thank you. Goodbye. And go birds. They're in Denver. Go birds. I like them this week. <laughs> uh, not me. <laughs>